Welcome back to Sorry Not Sorry. I'm Pastor Kelly Krieg alongside Pastor Stephen Cholak. We're here Howdy. for episode nine of our apologetics, uh, I guess, course we're, we're teaching. I don't know if we want to say that, but whatever, however we want to. Yeah, uh, sorry, not sorry. Uh, this is how you uh, defend your faith. There it is. There it is. So today we're going to be looking at um, how do we know God is the true God? How does God reveal himself to us? Oh, put the onus on God, huh? Right. Yeah. It, without a doubt. Definitely. Well, he, he is omnipotent and um, omniscient omniscient and yes. omnipresent and everything else. All right. Um, so, Almighty. yeah. So, how do we know that God is the true God? Because everybody has a God. They can't all be, or I guess unless you're Hindu, I guess they can't all be. But we would say no. If we're monotheistic, somebody's going to be wrong. And we have a lot of examples in the history of the world where there were pantheon of gods Mm -hmm. that were worshipped. But the the big three right now, I think, are monotheistic religions, Uh, at least the top two. Islam, Islam, Judaism, um, and and Christianity. Yeah, definitely Christianity and, and, uh, and Islam, the top two. Right. But so yeah, so how do we know? Is it just numbers? Um, you know, uh, because in a couple, oh, I got more people than you got, so therefore it, it right. must be right. So because if that's the case, I guess we're going to be Muslim in a, in a few years, right? Aren't they supposed to surpass Christians? Yeah, as the number one religion shortly. Or They're having they, more children. They are. They mm-hmm. are. But so, how do we? So he he reveals himself the probably the most prevalent way in the scriptures by performing miracles. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. So he either performs the miracles himself um, in in a extraordinary way or through his true prophets that we'll see that they will perform on his uh, command uh, these these extraordinary miracles that are, are throughout all, all of scripture in the uh, Old Testament, New Testament as well. Um, so yeah, and they can be like extraordinary in the individual sense, mm-hmm. like when he makes Sarah pregnant, right. Abraham's wife, with Isaac, and she's been barren, barren. and she is past the childbearing age, mm-hmm. and yet she still becomes pregnant. The same way Elizabeth, who bears John the Baptist mm-hmm. later in the New Testament, or it can be in the extraordinary out in the open kind of way, like when he shows himself as a pillar of fire by night and leads the people. Exactly. Or, or, yeah, those types of, those are the miracles too, I think, oftentimes in in things that people are saying, well, if God would just show himself like that today, then I would believe, right? And, uh, and we forget what we would, I guess, for lack of a better word, mundane miracles (laughs) that happen, you know, and that's what I try to, impress upon our kids and you know our confirmation kids and even the adults that every divine service there is a miracle taking place and it is it is an extraordinary miracle but because we um have it so often maybe or so it's so readily given to us um, our sinful selves often try to um, ignore it downplay it or or you know Whatever that, however we, we don't yeah. we don't see it for what it is so often. Exactly. Well, it, it just like, oh, this is how life is. So I just, oh yeah, moving on, <laughs> next thing, right? <laughs> right. Um, and then the the, perhaps the other one that just sort of slips under the radar is the fact that we have babies at all. Right. That life even life exists is a miracle of itself. Each each child conceived and born, and. And you see today um, how even that is dis- is attacked and is is oh, trying yeah, to de- my body, my den- choice. denied, right? I mean, th- we're post-election now with this episode and in, in some of the state referendums. Michigan passed that abomination of a law that mm-hmm. did not require doctors to give life-saving aid to a child that survives an abortion. Um, just absolutely horrible. It, it is. It is absolutely um, horrible to even and, and disgusting to think, because because for most of us we would say no. That a child, even if you you know agreed and life begins 
whenever, you know, outside of the womb, the child's outside, but, and so we, yeah. we're, we are denying humanity, and when you deny humanity, you deny the work of God, and you deny the miraculous. Well, and just to take an extra mm -hmm. second on this point, we have a, a distinction between the sanctity of life mm -hmm. and the quality of life. Right. And quality can be given by humanity to another human, and it, it's fickle. It changes whenever the needs or the the uh, situation changes, right? A mother doesn't want to be a mom, so quality of that baby's life goes out the window. Mm -hmm. Whereas sanctity of life is all tied to the work of, of Jesus and the fact that he went to the cross to redeem that child. Right. And, and gives it infinite worth. Exactly. <laughs> and so no, no matter the, the physical situation, socioeconomic situation, or, or just the the emotional bond that is or is not present between parents and child, does not negate Christ crucified um, in the same yeah. in, in that. Um, so so yeah. So God does reveal Himself to us in, in still in miraculous ways. Um, right. But but uh, we're blind to see. We're them blind because to of it. our our sinful flesh. Right. And so when we look at some of the more extraordinary, what we would uh, describe as extraordinary, you know, you look to Exodus, Moses crossing the Red Sea. Yeah. Uh, very. You know that these this this. this Horde uh, Pharaoh's army, you know, bearing down upon the, the the children of God as they are cornered, and and it's kind of the no escape at this point. And, and there's and, and had they reached them, they would have been most men, most of them annihilated. The rest right. brought back into slavery, um, and then their miraculous happens. <laughs> I get more questions from my from my eighth graders and seventh graders about this particular text, and the, the amazing thing of uh, the children of Israel go by on dry ground, mm -hmm. whereas when Pharaoh and his <laughs> they sink into the mud, <laughs> but there the is mud. no mud for the Israelites. Yeah, yeah. So he even causes the ground to be dry, and then Pharaoh. Uh, Binds them and 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 clogs their wheels and 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 clogs their progress and and it halts the progress of evil. That's what God does. He, yeah. he halts, halts the progress of evil, um, and 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 this is the the point of God showing Himself in these miraculous miraculous ways is that He is causing His people then to see Him and to to have faith and to yeah. believe uh, because now they see the mighty works of God for them. And uh, you would think that would be, you know, if you survived the, the crossing of the Red Sea, you would think that would be all you would ever need to know to, well, to continue you, to believe in God. And but, you brought up earlier, you said, oh, a lot of people who are like, if only I had been alive, right. then I would believe. And the people who were alive yeah. and saw these things end up not believing. Yeah. The, the biblical account would uh, attest to no, you yeah. wouldn't have believed <laughs> any more than the people there that day did, um, because uh, they they continue once they're unsafe and 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 dry ground. It's like, well, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. did you bring us out here to starve? And and you know, just grumbling continuously right. from the from them. But it it does did, show them the 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 power and might of God. Yeah. Now sometimes he uses his prophets to do these mm -hmm. things. Or his apostles later. Yep. Right. One of my favorites is the the people who were laid out on the streets so that Peter's shadow could hit them, <laughs> and they would be healed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's great. It is, and, and and it's all through God working through these these men, and 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 that also that because of the past miracles that God had performed, it. Uh, you know, it goes before and it precedes those men into other other uh, cultures and peoples. So we see when Rahab here saves them, uh, the, the men, uh, you know, and, and hides them because he, she had heard what God had done. Right. You know, they, I know your God's real. Uh, we have a lot of gods, and they've never parted to see. So I'm, I'm going to throw in with you, you guys. Uh, and so we see, we see that that's what God's miracles do as well. They, mm -hmm. they testify 
to beyond Scripture uh, to to other peoples um, to the truth of who He is. This happens too with when Jesus. Just last night, I was talking to somebody. Jesus is healing a blind, two blind men, mm-hmm. and he tells them, "Now, don't tell anybody this at all." And they can't help themselves; they have to tell everybody. And then, like, the news goes out throughout the, all the countryside, and then all of these people start swarming him, and yeah, and, and he has and, to go out into the wilderness to find any peace. And, and that's what he does, and, and, he, and he goes to. Uh, you know, and he crosses the Red Sea, and, or not the Red Sea, the, the Sea of Galilee, and goes to the other side, and the people are still, still following him. You yeah. know, and uh, so much so that he has to feed five thousand of them. <laughs> well, it's funny because you know it, that 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 account talks about Jesus crossing over into a desolate place, and the people follow him. But then when you read the account, I think it's Mark talks about how they sat down in in a green place. So even in a desolate place. Well, Jesus the Lord makes it green. Makes it green. You know, I you know leads him into green pastures beside still waters. It's beautiful. <laughs> and so, uh, you see that see the power of what Christ does for us. So yeah, so we have these these prophets that go before. So we, Moses, you know, one. I think the another another good one, the extraordinary. And this is really one where where God uh, allows his prophets to you know for, to be put to the test so to speak with with the uh the prophets of baal um yeah. this is a great one and um, to exercise their use of sarcasm and <laughs> wit <laughs> it is hilarious i i love this one maybe he's in the bathroom yeah <laughs> more or less <laughs> be louder maybe he's sleeping <laughs> yeah and so, you know, in this extraordinary, you know, dumps the water on there and soaks it in, and that there is absolutely no way that this this will be able, this tender will be able to go up. Yeah, this is and, the story from First Kings eighteen, mm-hmm. right? And then the prophets of Baal and Elijah, and and he just they're they're cutting themselves, you, they're ripping their clothes. Yeah, you pick you're, your your uh, sacrifice, I'll yeah. pick mine, and then um, you call down your god to consume your sacrifice with fire, and I'll call down the living God, and we'll see which one it is. And, yeah, they're cutting themselves. And they're dancing. <laughs> nothing for, for hours. For you know, hours, and, nothing. And, and nothing and nothing. And then, and then he calls them down, and not only consumes that, consumes everything, and, and just it shows the power and might of, of God. And, of course, then it, it, it shows that, that people that were there, um, that, okay, yeah, this— the gods that we had been backing, or the gods that you know, the the leadership, the priests, and the, the the religious leaders of our land, were false gods, um, and this this is the true God. Well, and this is also another example, I think, of the struggle, the combat, stupendous, uh, if you will, between the old Adam and the new Adam in us, mm-hmm. because Elijah does this great thing. He then eventually, when this is all said and done, takes all of the prophets of ba- Baal and goes and slaughters them, and then runs like a little girl, little baby girl, um, <laughs> away from Jezebel yep. in fear, uh, in unbelief. And 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 we and that is we have. Was I allowed the, to say baby girl? I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just uh, misogynist. Yeah. misogynistic he, he uh, screams like a baby and he leaves okay boy eight, or girl now you're an ageist you're yeah, li- okay. little little babies are well i don't never mind <laughs> but yeah so well when it goes to the fickle nature of our human frailty i guess or or mm-hmm. our human conviction that we we can you know one minute be these stalwart defenders of the faith yeah. and then the next we were peter denying christ um, and in these situations, the another miracle happens, and that is that the Lord comes straight away and says, "No, yeah, get yourself up and get back." Well, yeah. I'm the only one left. Yeah, no, you're not. No, you're not. Get over there and go. <laughs> right. And, and I'm not going to leave you. And and so. And he strengthens us in these moments. He does. And so we he calls these prophets to be able to uh, to witness and and, and to give testimony to who he is uh, and he's done it throughout the history of of his people and, and and so he grounds himself in in history and and in an objective way it's not the fantasy stories of the surrounding peoples and their gods that are right. that are not grounded in truth these things are are there's witnesses they're 
thousands of people witness these these miraculous events. Pastor Craig, I'm noticing a pattern here. <laughs> a lot of the things that the Bible is giving us and teaching us is shown by eyewitness accounts. And that is uh, part of the apologetics of, of what we do in apologetics is is giving an account. So, like I say, when when you if you were to go into a courtroom to give evidence, the Bible and that is what you want. You want these eyewitnesses. You want these people that say, you know, I was there. I saw X, Y, and Z, and this happened, that happened, and that happened. And then it's collaborated with the extra evidence that is still out there. And that's what we get from the Bible. That's what we get from God's uh, revelation to us. And then it's verified even today through archaeology and, and, and these types of things. We, in other words, we keep seeing it with our eyes. We do. Right? We do. We keep seeing it. Um, and so, well, then that, but that would also then we need to discern, okay, well, if God reveals himself, you know, in a pillar of fire in these miraculous ways or through his prophets, yeah, it's, maybe it's one thing. It's easy to, to maybe when God comes to us in a burning bush or comes to us uh, in a pillar of fire or however it might be to say, okay, well, this is God. Um, but a lot of people were also saying that they were prophets of God. And so how do we discern who is an actual prophet Many of God? Will come and, in my name, Jesus says. Right. And say, so how so how do we Christ. discern between a true prophet of God and and a false prophet? Because even in our day, you see people claim to be prophets um, that God is speaking to them, and uh, so many many um, pieces came together to be this, the holy scriptures. Uh, the Bible's not just one book, but sixty six mm -hmm. written over thousands of years. And one of the specific characteristics or circumstances is that they all line up or they all agree with each other. They all support one another. So we have this saying in, in Lutheranism, Scripture interprets Scripture. And when you have a false prophet, he's going to... He's going to not say things that jive with the rest of Scripture. Right. And so we, we check it against God's Word. And so a true prophet is going to want, well, one, you know, if, if this is a true prophet, he's going to be able to perform these sensational miracles. He's going to be able to do the things that God allows people to do, those extraordinary things. But even that alone doesn't guarantee that this is a true prophet. I mean, Take Moses, you know, he, all the things he does, the Pharaoh's magicians do the same thing or, or having the illusion of doing the same thing. So they oftentimes, it's, it's not just the sensational thing, but as you say, it's also what they're in agreement with. What right. are they actually saying that causes, and, and what are they defending, and what are they, they, they um, saying and, and putting forth that God says yes and to prove this this is this miraculous thing that he is going to do right. um and so we have to look at that and they're gonna like I say they're gonna agree with moses they're gonna agree with 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 all of the the prophets of the past they're gonna agree with the apostles they're gonna agree with obviously with christ and what he says there's not gonna be a, a instance of something disagreeing when jesus when, excuse me, when God wants you mm -hmm. to see who he is, he shows you Jesus, or he tells you about right. Jesus. And if that's missing, you should have some alarm bells going off. Without a doubt. And and one of the also things, one of the important things of, the, of a true prophet is they, what they say actually happens. <laughs> it's, it's, true. It, it, it's true. It comes to pass. And and you see, so especially in our day, modern day prophets or so-called prophets that have these predictions and 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 make you know god came to me in a dream and said this and this and this is going to happen and then it doesn't that right there pretty much tell you okay well this guy wasn't talking to god I'm not saying he wasn't talking to somebody but it it wasn't god uh so a mark of a true prophet also is what he says when and the words that god gives him will come to fruition well remember too when jesus prophesies that mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is coming. He even tells us then that the Holy Spirit doesn't come and talk about whatever he wants to talk about. He only talks about the things which he's already heard. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and even the Holy Spirit, Spirit won't do this crazy non-profit thing. Well, and, and that's the, that's what it is, too. There's, there's not, there, you're not going to have, there's not any ongoing revelation that's going to continue to add to the Bible. It is 
it, it is complete. It is for, the word of God has been given in in its totality to us, uh, preser- preserved in the scriptures, um, and all and all of it points to Christ and Him crucified and His resurrection. The only thing yet to happen is those prophecies of Christ's return. Christ's return, yeah, and and we'll. When that day comes, that's that's nobody's going to be questioning it, whether or not it is uh, actually happening. Um, so we we have that this this way to be able to kind of to mark whether or not these these prophets are real, and and also the you know the marks of the false prophets, what they won't do. You know, they're gonna a false prophet's going to tell you what you want to hear, not what God wants you to 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 know. The time um, is coming and is upon us when people will preach for itching ears itching ears yeah. and, and and look on the religious landscape of today that's a majority i would think of is what you're getting is is because when you scratch those ears it uh loosens the wallets and uh and that's people have found a way to make money on it and 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 uh, these these modern day false prophets which is it's disturbing that people would would do that, but not uh, surprising, right? So we're um, we're going to take next week off because of Thanksgiving. We will. We but will I'm, be giving thanks and praise and praise. I'm wondering if we might be able to take uh, some time when we come back after the break mm-hmm. to talk about the manuscripts themselves. I think so. I think that would be a good. They're very unique in the sense that. How they've been delivered to us, right? And these original documents that were written in Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, and such, right? And and I think we should, without a doubt, I think that's what we'll go as we go forward is to look at how just the preservation of these documents is miraculous. Um, yeah, you know, and compare them to some of the other like amazingly um, prevalent texts like the Iliad or the Odyssey. Right? right. There's, they're just, I mean, the, no, no one doubts the authenticity and the, the authors of these great works of art or in, of literature. Um, but, but they don't even compare. So. They, don't, they don't even compare. Yeah. We'll get into that next time. So yeah, I think we'll look at, look at those, uh, the, just the miraculous um, preservation of the scripture of God's word to us today from, from the beginning. Yeah, that um, miracle has he comes to reveal himself again and again and again. It is. It is. It's such a wonderful thing. So, yeah. So, all right. Yeah, well, so we'll, uh, like I said, we're going to take this week off, or sorry, next week off for Thanksgiving. Hope all of y'all have a, a blessed Thanksgiving with your family. Safe travels if you're going anywhere. Um, but make sure to, uh, uh, if you get bored at Thanksgiving or you uh, maybe if you need something to sleep to, <laughs> you can go ahead and put us on. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll just that, drown out everything for you in the background. and. You know, and uh, sweet, sweet slumbers. But uh, go ahead and uh, like and share. Um, ring the bell. Ring the bell. Make sure everybody knows about it. And then uh, we'll come back with a new episode after Thanksgiving. So for Sorry Not Sorry, I'm Pastor Creed. I'm Pastor Cholak. God have, bless. Have a blessed day.